post fight Milbag for Cleverly versus Kovalev. Somebody named R. Ray, he says, Kovalev reminds me of a bigger, more refined version of Triple G, meaning although Golovkin has destructive power in both hands, I have seen him swinging wildly and not being focused on accuracy. This guy, Kovalev, is just methodical yet efficient and accurate. Every punch thrown has intent to hit something. Not only that, he seems to have the skill, timing and work rate to deal with the so-called tool and mobile fighters. He handled Campillo and Cleverly rather easy, even though both had a height and reach advantage. I think he sends B-Hop into retirement badly. Well, you're saying about the height and reach advantage, he didn't use it. So, <laughs> I don't know what to say on that, you know what I mean? And somebody named Shaq to Andre, he responds to that and says, Exactly. Kovalev will bomb Hopkins into retirement. Maul231, he says, I like your pub. Come on, let's have it. <laughs> Laughing out loud. That's in reference to me saying, yeah, Nathan fought like he was in a in a pub. <laughs> Going for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, let's have it. <laughs> what the fuck are you looking at? You saw fuck all, get me! Get me! Phil Payne says Hopkins will probably be the underdog if they ever fight. And once again, the executioner will take a monstrous puncher to school. Kovalev will never get a chance to set his feet against the executioner. Cleverly did everything you're not supposed to do against a puncher like Kovalev. The executioner is a different class. So, um, he thinks that Hopkins will school Kovalev. Well, the experience gap is huge. The experience gap is huge. It has to be said. And I agree with you about Allowing Kovalev to set his feet. I agree with you with that. But like I've said, like I've said, if that fight or any other fight Bernard Hopkins is in, I'm picking the opponent to beat Bernard. Simply because he's near 50. So <coughs> even <laughs> the thing, I was trying to explain to someone, yeah. When I do prediction videos for Hopkins, right, I might have him winning the fight, regardless of all the other factors, but. The age, just the age alone, I'm picking against him. RJ Dobson, he says the winner of Stevenson versus Cloud should get Kovalev. Wow. <laughs> Some big punching fights between the three of them. That's all I know, boy. <laughs> People are hitting the canvas. <laughs> uh. Andy Brown, Nathan is a bum. He'll be driving taxis in two years. <laughs> Mars916, he says there's no way Cleverly could have won. Even if Kovalev didn't have the power that he does, he would have still won. Kovalev is more offensively skilled, has better timing, more accurate, has a better sense of range and better defense. Cleverly might have a slight edge in speed, but it's not even that significant of an edge to be really a factor. Before this fight, I was thinking that Kovalev could probably beat every light heavyweight in the world. Yeah, I sort of go with you on the first part of what you said. I did think Kovalev was better than Nathan in most departments, except the speed. Like you said, I think Nathan had the faster feet. Definitely the faster feet, but Nathan neglected that. He neglected that. Chris Turner, he says, thanks for the videos, boxing beats and rhymes on the recent bouts today. You're welcome, my friend, you're welcome. Sean sure, Newton, he says, Nathan was open for those right hands. Yes, yes he was. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, uh, the writing was kind of on the wall. The Cool Tunes Network, he says, damn, I'll catch the replay tonight. He's not ready for the big names. I think... He's talking about cleverly, you know what I mean? Because there's nowhere else for cover left to go but except fight the big names. Action, guard, action. He says, great breakdown beats. You know what I mean? I say, yeah, you know, I do what I do, what I do, what I do. OTKP. He had no strategy. 
He fought like he wasn't aware of Kovalev's power until after the first knockdown. You have to box Kovalev, not stand right in front of the guy and try to block all of his punches. He's too fucking powerful. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm going to disagree. I see, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to disagree with you, right? You see, some fighters have a penchant for slugging. Their body type and their mentality dictates how they're going to fight. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. That's good. That, that's If you know who you are, you know who you are. What I'm saying is, if you're going to go and slug, slug. And slug properly, you know? <laughs> like, like, learn all the tricks. Tuck the shoulder into the chin. And you see what Enzo Macronelli did yesterday. And that's because Enzo has been killed so many times. He's had to, he's had no choice but to modify his boxing. So, if you're going to go up close to a big puncher, go really close and nullify him from getting any arm room to swing. But don't stand at what, 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 what do I call it, mid-range. A mid-range thing there, you know what I mean? You, you, know, you got to be careful with that, dude, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bob, weave, bang the button, Pro proper, proper infighting. But don't be in two minds whether you're boxing or slugging. Either be a boxer, slugger, or be a boxer, or be a slugger. Pick one of the three. And that's why I had the feeling what was going to happen to Nathan. is because, you know, he was going to get caught between styles. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Actual Ashley, he says, Terry O'Connor tried his best to keep Cleverly in the fight. Even carry Cleverly into his corner. Frank Warren probably calling Terry into his office right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll try to work that one out. Why would Frank Warren want him? Terry was trying to help the guy, so I don't think Frank Warren would be reprimanded him. Terry O'Connor gave him every chance. It kind of reminded me of Frank Bruno versus Jumbo Cummings back in the 80s. Now, Jumbo Cummings was uh, obviously a heavyweight, a jailbird, and he hurt, held some weightlifting records he could obviously bench press a lot and he was the first fighter that I think when Bruno was coming up that could compete with Bruno for chest size and bicep big strong dude you know what I mean roughneck man that you know what I mean and I think um he was the last person to fight Joe Frazier and it was a draw he drew Joe Frazier in Joe Frazier's final bout Jumbo Cummings and they were boxing and Bruno was doing well Bruno was doing well Cummings looking strong. Then Cummings crashed his right hand on Bruno's chin. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Bruno just like got shook to his foundations. And the bell rang. I can't remember what round it was. It was an early round. The bell rang. And Harry Gibbs. I think it was Harry Gibbs at the time, man. I'm sure it was Harry. Was it Harry Gibbs? Harry Gibbs held him up and sort of like ushered him to the corner, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, you know what I mean, Harry Gibbs said it was the heaviest dead weight that he had ever felt on his person, and Bruno managed to um, get the minutes rest, he was still groggy when he came out, but he boxed his way back into it, and he managed to stop Cummings later on in the mid-rounds. Kaiba, 360, you can't use your chin as a skill, laughing my ass off. Some fans think a good chin is going to save a fighter every single time. Cleverly was stunned by lesser fighters, so I knew an accurate puncher like Kovalev was going to give him the business. And you make very, very good points. Very good points here. For one, you reference what I was saying, which is always good, where I said, <laughs> where I said um, yeah, you can't use your chin as a skill. You just can't do it. You can't. It's not on. It's not on. Yeah, everybody keeps saying Kovalev is this great, great power puncher, power puncher. And yes, the boy can punch. He can punch. Of course, he can punch. But the operative word here is accurate. It's his accuracy. You know, you know. I don't make too much a big deal on punching power all the time. It's accuracy. Right. You need good hand-to-eye coordination so you can see the target 
See the opportunity and take it. Accuracy. Primal Pixies 1, he says, Hopkins certainly got in the head of Pascal, who is a big puncher. I'm not sure about Kovalev, though. It's possibly harder to pre-fight mind games with someone like him. It's hard to go against Hopkins, even at his advanced age. But I wonder if he has the legs to keep Kovalev away early on, when the Russian is strong. Has Kovalev been in a 12-round fight? The answer to that, my friend, is no. The Cell 8, he says... I object to anyone calling this a loss. This was not a loss. This is an annihilation of the highest order. <laughs> the cell is a mad boy. <laughs> Slipstar TV. Damn. Cleverly got destroyed badly. Nathan's approach was just awful. I thought the ref was waving it off at the end of round three. Cleverly looked gone on his stool. The thing was, man, like, if Terry O'Connor didn't escort him back to his corner he would have fell down looked like he would have fell down and his eyes looked dead in the corner what are they send him back out there for i don't know what they sent him back out you know i suppose because it's a world title so what did i expect primal pixies one he asks what do you think about andre ward against kovalev at light heavyweight sometime next year what do i think about that Sounds good to me. <laughs> so I won't mind seeing it. I won't mind seeing it at all. The Cell 8, he comes back and says, Cleverly wanted his lacy moment. He just got it, laughing out loud. Utter destruction. He's referring to Joel Calzaghe's signature performance. Well, they say it's a signature performance. I'd go for the Hopkins fight. But another performance that is well decorated by Calzaghe is when he defeated Jeff. Left hook Lacey by unanimous decision and took his WBC belt and became unified champion at super middleweight, I believe. The Fox 251. Cleverly's a tall fighter who fights short. Yes, once again, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And you're correct. You're correct. But Alexis Arguello would stand in the pocket and slug and he was tall for a lightweight and a junior lightweight he was tall the difference is he was a boxer puncher and he knew when to box and when to slug i don't know if margarito is a good example he's a tall guy who used to give up his reach but he was a mexican who was well versed in the art of trench warfare but we'll dismiss that one for now <laughs> Because of the fucking bricked up gloves and all that. We'll, we'll dismiss that. King James 1101. Cleverly had never fought anyone with a pulse. Barring a green Baloo. When Baloo gets ironed out by Stevenson. Those two can scrap it out again. Three scary dudes right now. Matisse. Triple G. Kovalev. Are just laying waste to anyone they hit. Wayne Kerr, he says, Cleverly is a European-level boxer at best. He simply isn't a world-level boxer. I'm glad the hype job got exposed. Ooh. <laughs> uh, once again, I've been saying this way before I had this boxing beats and rhyme thing going on. Right? He needs to get rid of the staff in there. I, I don't know what capacity Joe Gallagher or whatever his name is was working in there. Dude, it's got to go. And I think if you've got your dad training you, maybe you need to step away from that, step out of your comfort zone, try some new things, get a new mindset. It's not too late. You're still young. You need to get a mindset where you think differently about your boxing, how you approach it. I I've seen that for a long time. And it's easy for me to point out all these things in hindsight. You see, when you win, your thoughts become less of an arguing point <laughs> when you win. But when you lose... People start addressing everything you're doing. I mean, the object... Look, 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 look. Let's get this straight, man. Like, Nathan is a warrior. He's a boxer. He's a warrior. And despite everything that I'm saying and all of us are saying, somebody has to lose. Somebody has to lose, yeah? Maybe Nathan has maxed out his credit card, so to speak. Maybe there's nothing more for him to learn. 
and this is Nathan and if that's so we have to accept that but if you look how he took the first punch which was the first rock in the landslide so to speak Nathan just walks in against this big puncher if you look at it he walks in moving sort of towards his left and he throws this innocuous nothing jab this is like what's that jab what's that jab doing he didn't try and bang it in the guy's face make him blink and reset no nah, no nah, it was a silly jab watch it again a silly left hand jab Kovalev just calmly countered with the right hand accurately people keep going on about the power accuracy is a strong component of power yes it is you know and it was a wrap when I've done the David Hay Derek Chisora breakdown this is the prediction breakdown video I had to take it down because of copyright bullshit I've still got it up on Facebook somewhere so if you want to see it I'll give you the link I spoke of Derek Chisora not getting the proper trajectory through his arm, through his fist, and his punches. And that is going to be a hazard to him against somebody as sharp as David Hay. And Derek done a similar thing to what Nathan did. He threw this silly right hand, which, where was it going? Why, why even throw it? Why throw it? And he got counted, and he got, that was the first knockdown, and he got knocked out after that. And Nathan done a similar thing there, you know? There's a few British fighters that do that. That's why I give Kell Brook a 50-50 chance against Devon if the fight ever takes place. Because Kell has a few flaws, but he doesn't waste much of his punches if you watch him fight. And that means you don't become so discombobulated. You know where you're going to throw. And Kell's very accurate too. So I'll give him a 50-50 shot. Now, let's look at that nothing jab that he threw. Do you think there's a possibility that Kovalev and John David Jackson were studying that Nathan does this? Yeah, I think there was. Do you mean they were waiting, waiting for him to do something like this? It wasn't just a random, yeah, the opportunity came along and he took it. No, he was studying Nathan. He was studying all these faults. This is world championship boxing. Gives up his height. Doesn't focus on distance and doesn't really believe in his jab. You know, he just throws it because that's what he was taught to do. Even though he's six foot three, he doesn't want to develop his whole fight plan around that jab. They saw you coming, man. They saw you coming. He was being studied. Now, to me, <coughs> the early rounds against this big puncher, how much is it? 19 knockouts in 21 fights? tight guard use that foot speed man use it use it and if you're gonna go up close go really close like Enzo did on over McKenzie and nullify him from getting leverage into his shots if you can if you can but when you throw the jab make sure you bang that motherfucker in his face bang between his eyes Ugh! what was that hit him see how Darren Barker was positive when he threw them shots yesterday he was positive like you see he, he walked up to the guy, bang, straight in his face. He didn't throw no timid little jab. He banged his shot in. And it ended around. He lifted up his hand. But we'll talk more about that one tomorrow, right? He, was, he had a positive mindset. That's what got him through that fight. It was close. Could have went either way, but he got the decision. And his positive mindset enabled him to execute what he had to do yesterday. There's an article in here, man. There's an article... And it's just, it, it's like, it's me speaking, but it's Nathan speaking, but he's speaking what I've said all the time, but now he's saying it in hindsight. Uh, like, it's, it's weird. He's talking about how his defense let him down and how he doesn't always work on his defense in the gym. So, you know, what is his coaches doing? What is he doing if he's not doing that? Like, you know, the interviewer asks him, was you a bit cocky when you dropped your hands and beckoned him in, in, you know? And apparently he sounds very downbeat after what's happened. And no surprise there. No surprise. And the interviewer asks Nathan about Kovalev's power and how he was saying, yeah, I think I'll be able to take the power beforehand. And, you know, that's cool, you know, a bit of bravado. But it wasn't just bravado. This is the attitude he takes into the gym. 
if Nathan had went into training camp and his trainers had went into the training camp with the ideology that, yo, this guy isn't going to hit you clean on your chin. This is how we're going to organize this camp. This is going to be the theme for the fight. We're not going to, but he didn't, he didn't, you know, he waited until he got into the fight. And then he says it in the interview. He realized that if this guy hits him on the chin, he's going to knock him out. See, there's no backup plan because you've already had it in your mind. Your fans have gassed you up and the television networks have gassed you up that, yeah, Nathan can always rely on his iron chin. But now you're in the ring against his power puncher and you know in yourself you're relying on your chin more than your defense. And there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. You're in the fight now. You know, you have to indoctrinate yourself in camp that, yeah, I'm going to stand behind this jab. I've got the height and reach advantage. I'm going to use my feet. I'm going to give the guy angles. You've got to indoct- You've got to believe in this shit. You know, you've got to believe in that shit. When he came to the realization in the first round that this guy is going to knock him out if he hits him clean, you know, it shouldn't have been alarm bells for him because... His training camp should have gave him the confidence and the knowledge and the muscle memory that, okay, fair enough, he can punch hard, but can he land? I've been working on my footwork. I've been working, you know what I mean? My jab. I believe in this shit, you know? I know how to keep range. I know how to keep him offset and give him angles. But he didn't have that, unfortunately. And it's a, it's a big ox. It's a big ox. It's a big ox. But then again, if you're a world champion people are going to demand that you um, have angles like that covered. But I'm going to drop the article in the description box so you can read it thoroughly. And right about now, I'm going to say peace out, peace.